If you're in the market for a cloud security role, whether it's a red team role, SOC role, engineer, architect, then you need to find a way to stand out in the sea of LinkedIn applications that are gonna be there in front of the recruiter for that senior cloud security role that you apply for. One of the easiest way to do this is to have projects updated so that they're easy to explain and easy to understand by the potential hiring manager. And at the same time, they are unique enough that they stand out in the crowd. I have assembled three unique cloud security project ideas for you, which would guarantee that you stand out in a cloud of roles for a senior cloud security job. Now, based on the type of role you're applying for, you can either pick one out of the three or you can work on all three if you're feeling awesome. Towards the end, I'll also share a freeway, which you can clearly steal. Four. to learn from other senior cloud security experts on how they would work on these projects as well as some of the other projects that are out there. So stay tuned for that as well. The first project is creating business specific threat detection rules. As a cloud security engineer or architect or SOC person, you're probably looking at cloud security alerts being thrown at you from cloud security native tools like your Guard Duty Central one, etc. Or you're looking at CSPM, CNAP, which acronyms, if they don't make sense, essentially they tell you how bad the security of your cloud footprint is. These CSPM CNAS also give you alerts on different threats that are there active in your organization's cloud footprint. Now, most people out there would have done projects for implementing a CSPM or a CNAP or looking at implementing cloud native security tools into a cloud environment for, the, for their businesses. However, to get an unfair advantage, you need to do what the senior cloud security engineers are doing, which is to identify the gaps that are left behind. For example, if you use a service that is not so common, perhaps you're using a service is called Amazon Personalize or an IoT device service because you work in the energy sector or you work in a health sector, whatever the industry you may be working in, chances are there are cloud services that you may be using in your organization that are very unique to you. In fact, the threats that you experience would be different to other people. So building a business specific cloud threat rule would also enable you to shine not just in your own organization, but also for all the applications you put out for a senior cloud role as well, which means you're solving challenges like how do I identify using the existing log provided by my cloud provider, my application, my product teams, how can I use that input to produce new rules for threats that are not being picked up by CSPM, CNAP, or my native cloud security tools. This is a great project for someone who's trying to stand out in the crowd and wants to have an advantage for the senior role. Under the same category, if you want, you can have other projects like building a honey trap into your AWS account or doing a security assessment of your Azure account or similar across the other cloud service providers. Number two, keeping up with the cloud and the AI. Yes, you would have heard a lot of businesses have invested a lot of money in AI. And as a security professional, you're probably working on how do I A, understand the AI that is being used in my organization and B, the AI being used in my organization, is it using any cloud native services that I need to understand what are some of the security best practices that I should be implementing against those cloud native services, perhaps you're using something like Azure Open AI service, or you're using like Amazon Bedrock or whatever other AI native service that you may have from your cloud service provider. You could also be using third-party services like Claude, OpenAI, and their APIs to have your AI-based application run smoothly and create all those beautiful graphs and improve productivity and all of that as well. Perhaps you could even look at using AI for your security team. Now, within this space of AI, keeping up with cloud and AI is basically finding projects within the AI space, whether it's to secure AI, secure using AI, or improving the productivity of the security team that you're working in, using AI. Like those three subcategories of projects are really awesome to be standing out in a crowd, especially when a lot of people are working in these projects. By the way, side project, most of these AI workloads are sitting on containers and Kubernetes. So if you learn how to do security for Kubernetes, that's definitely an extra bonus point. Project number three, identify patterns and build for scale. As someone who's working regularly in the cloud security space, you're solving different cloud security problems any given day. Some of this would require you to work with the developer teams so you can stop them from making mistakes. Some of these might require you to work with the platform team to start building services with them that are secure. Now, that's how normal people would think, but if you wanna have an unfair advantage, what you should be doing is thinking of automation. How can I learn infrastructure as code languages so you can integrate security into CI/CD? pipeline, build templates that your platform teams can use to have a quote unquote yellow paved road. So you can lay down the foundation for how you can create cloud accounts 
with the right security foundation. So any new accounts that are being created by your platform team or DevOps team for cloud, they all have the basic foundation security pieces in there. So that's identifying the patterns for where perhaps some of the most vulnerability could be. Perhaps it's from creating the cloud accounts without the security defaults. The other place you could also identify patterns could also be around which one of these vulnerabilities that you see from your CSPM CNAP is wide across everything. So if you have 10,000 vulnerabilities or misconfigurations to look at, which one of these vulnerabilities can be categorized into say one category of, let's just give an example of public resource being open to the internet. If out of the 10,000, 200 are based on public resources on the internet, focusing just on that problem and how you can identify and scale that automatically so that it doesn't happen again, that's a great example of a project again that will give you the unfair advantage for any senior role that you might be applying for. Now, these three projects are amazing and it will give you the fun fair advantage. You can take this information and do this on your own or you can copy and learn from other cloud security experts who are sharing this information for free on YouTube as well. I'm talking about Advent of Cloud Security that is being run by Cloud Security Podcast as part of which they have 24 days of cloud security experts talking about Kubernetes, honey traps, optimizing SOC operations. We are talking about integrating security into CI/CD pipeline and a lot more in all three popular cloud providers like Amazon, Azure, Google Cloud. Now, I will leave the link in the description as well. I will leave the playlist over here for you to check out if you want to know more projects that you can copy and learn from other experts for free, especially if you don't have anyone close by that you could look at from a senior perspective, from a senior cloud security role, you should not miss this. If you would like us to deep dive into any of these topics, definitely drop this in the comment and we'll be more than happy to create these projects for you and give you a walkthrough. But I hope you enjoy this playlist of Advent of Cloud Security at advent.cloudsecuritypodcast.tv. I'll see you next one. Peace.